Welcome back to writing an offer in Transaction Desk. This is part two, and I'll just share my screen based off of where we left off. This is the listing that we are talking about, and we are in the form section. So we'll jump right over to that uh, from the wizard. If you ever get lost in your back, you can the wizard portion is up on the top right here, and you go through the different portions. Okay, so. Uh, it is a residential, so we'll have an idea of what forms we're going to utilize. We're going to click on this. This is where we can put things in to the um, kind of the foundation of your offer. We decided to just leave this blank. It can feel more friendly. It's two days by default at 9 p.m. We've got the buyer, Joe. Joe happens to be uh, single, so we'll want to pay attention to that. We call that single person and unmarried persons. And this has to do with how Joe will be on title. So you want to make sure that you've checked in with the lender to find out how this person wants to be on title. Skipped right over the date, but we'll include that. This really has not a whole lot of meaning, uh, meaning other than it's going to coincide with all of the rest of the offer. It's just when you write that offer. The multiple listing number is in there. And uh, check, again, the seller's. Uh, names are correct and you can go to realist to check on that or the tax records and this should have been put in there by default the tax parcel number you can also verify that on the um, realist report here's the address all looks good and maybe you'll go back to the listing if your clients don't remember what was included in there as far as the appliances dishwasher oven dryer garbage disposal blah 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 Okay, so we can go back and check those things. Refrigerator, washer, dryer, dishwasher. And um, garbage disposal now is a part of that in the contract later. And we'll just leave that as it is. So again, make sure that you're not relying on the listing as far as what your buyer is going to get. This is the contract that when it's mutually agreed that your, your uh, client will get. It's not based off of something that's on the listing. All right, purchase price, 1.8, earnest money. Let's go ahead and put down uh, 50,000 and we'll do a wire uh, within two days after mutual acceptance. That's gonna be held by the closing agent. We never hold earnest money here as the buyer brokerage. Default is gonna be forfeiture of earnest money. Title Insurance Company, let's go back and see who the listing agent's buddy is on title. That is uh, Bin Tran Title. No, that's not correct. Don't put that in. It's Old Republic Title and Bin is the title officer. So ORTC, put that in there. They do a fantastic job. So you can type that out or um, ORTC should be fine for the title, closing, same. And then you would put Ben's name here on that. We'll just confirm, should have her name. And it's nice to have the phone number in there as well, just for to help everybody out, including your friendly, um, oh, that's the title number there. So we'll put that in there, not the phone number, but they'll have the order number and that'll make it easier for them. All right, we can put that there, number, and bin. Okay, closing date, that by default, what we put in earlier on the wizard, and possession date, we're going to put on closing. We've seen all kinds of crazy stuff as far as um, possession date being, you know, month months later, a couple months later. Uh, we're going to keep this one simple just for the purpose of going through the process. Uh, there's so much in writing an offer to where you don't just, okay, I've done this class, so I just check everything out. There's so many little details in that. So anyway, right now, closing date, same as possession date. Keep in mind, those are two separate things. And we could even put in here, let's just put upon recording. That means they don't have to wait legally until 9 p.m. 9 p.m. of that day, which is the default Services of closing agent, we're going to request that. Charges, um, we're just going to have seller 
we're just not sure on that listing. So we'll have seller um, take care of everything. If you don't know, make sure that you have that conversation with the buyer. If it's a highly competitive market, uh, you can find out if there's any, um, any assessments, pending assessments, typically there's the, um, the sewer, you know, maybe an LID, something there, but find out if there is something and it just looks better assumed by buyer, especially if you don't know, if you know that there's nothing, but make sure that you know if you're checking that. All right, and we can just leave this blank. I think they had a FERP to actually, they did say that seller was not a foreign persons. You are representing the buyer. They're representing the seller. And here's where this is just this addenda portion is just a index, if you will, of the forms. It's not legally binding. That's anything. Anything's here. So we're going to say that our clients actually need a financing addendum, some financing protection, uh, but they're going to agree to put an additional down payment. And uh, we I always like to include the 22D. It just clarifies some things. And then we're going to provide evidence of funds on this because part of their down payment is going to be from selling stock. We know it's Microsoft. It's going to be fine. And uh, if it's not cash in the bank ready to go, it needs to have that 22 EF there. Now, let's see what else will we need. I think it's a newer home. We don't need lead paint. We'll include the 22K for utilities. And let's see, what else do we need here? I just like to go through alphabetically. I don't put in the FERPTA form. It's really not a part of the purchase sale agreement. It's just a notice, but you may want to check in with the listing broker because sometimes they just like to have all of that there, whether they need it or not. They, sometimes they just don't know that they, what they don't need. We're going to waive the financing because we already saw it. Uh, the exceptional listing broker provided that. And let's see, what else are we going to do here? Let's do an escalation just in case our, our clients love this. So we are doing a 35 E escalation and let's see, we do have some John L Scott forms that we won't I think we're going to put in here yet. We may come back to this one. Okay, everything else defaults. If you put your buyer's information in there, it's going to default to put in here. Again, make it as easy as possible for all parties. I would uh, uh, put the items in here. Then over here, check. A lot of times the seller phone number will be zeros or something that's not correct. If that's the case, that'll show up here. Just make it easier and just delete that. And everything else looks good. Keep in mind, you're going to anything you send in, you're going to be utilizing the, um, of course, the, the listing broker and the firm, the listing firm's address and the your firm's address with everything that you're sending. And of course, everything else there is default. So we go up here to file, save and exit. Well, if we can. And then we'll go to the next addendum. We'll just go through that uh, 22A financing addendum. Here we go. Everything is by default there. If you change one thing here, it'll change it in all of the forms. So keep that in mind. We're going to do a conventional first. And let's see, they're going to do 20% down. He is. And we're just going to leave this by default. Make sure that all of the things that you leave blank by default is okay with your buyer. And we're going to put get seller. They have to actually request something. 21 days is fine after mutual acceptance. And if you're not understanding what I say about this form, then I would say go to the forms classes and review. Make sure you're understanding everything. This class is more about just going through the process of getting something. But I encourage you to read these, know these, and know what to do with them. These are critical for helping your buyer out and winning in this market. Okay. Um, by automatically, if you don't check anything, appraisal will not be waived. I just don't like to check it because it just seems nicer on this. Uh, automatic waiver portion is if uh, you need to have it a little bit stronger, just automatically, it's going to be waived within whatever amount of days you put in here. 
and seller's not going to pay any closing costs. That's all fine. So this should be good to go. And we just, again, go to saving that and exiting. Moving on to the 22, we included the 22 AD because they're going to put a little bit extra down. And, uh, you know, they've got, they're willing to go for it a little bit on this. They're willing to pay 200000 more than appraised value. Now, Joe's... Joe's up for it. He doesn't. He's he's good. He loves this place. Not going to pay three million, but he's going to pay three hundred thousand above appraised value. Probably won't need to in this, but uh, willing to. And then uh, this bottom portion is only if you don't use a twenty-two A. You use just an appraisal addendum for that. So that should be good to go. And we'll save that. And moving on, we have the 22 um, D and we'll quickly go through that. Again, all of these are by default. Always check this. It's just a disclaimer for you that you're not representing the accuracy of information. Don't check anything here unless you, your buyer wants standard, which is less than the Alta already provided. Extended coverage, keep in mind, if your buyer chooses that, they're getting a survey done unless a survey has already been completed. That doesn't mean there's just a map showing the boundaries. It means an actual survey that the title company can utilize. We'll have the uh, seller clean the property, um, personal property. Again, this just clarifies things. Utilities, you can just state what it already is. Public water, public sewer, natural gas, probably have electricity. And uh, cable, internet, that may be important to your buyer. So keep that in mind. Can just pass this by if it's not new construction. Lease property, you want to make sure that you know. Homeowner association review period, if you're wanting to have strength, this is a weasel clause. So don't check it unless um, it's imperative that your buyers take a look at the homeowners association. And homeowners tr association transfer fee. Um, if there is a homeowners association, by default, the uh, seller will pay. And excluded items, if there's some things there that the seller wants to take with him that you know of. And then this other place is a good place to put in different things that you want to add to the contract without having a completely new form. That's it for that. And on to the next one. We've got the FERPTA, but that's going to be in the documents portion. So we don't need to fill that out. And the evidence of fund, this is where we're going to put in that they're actually going to need to utilize uh, $500,000 of uh, funds. Um, and we'll just put in their um, stocks. No, just checking. Just checking with you. If you're paying attention, it's not... Uh, those funds are readily convertible. So stocks and um, checking that there. Uh, if you haven't provided the down payment fund, you know, showed um, the non contingent funds, um, you can check this and actually show um, some documentation of that. It says buyers were relying on non contingent funds for payment. I also provide evidence of that within such and such a mutual ex acceptance. Um, unless you disclose other source of funds, the other um, source of funds is the stocks here. Okay, again, read that form for all of the details. As this training is more about just putting it all together. And let's see, 22K, that's filled out by uh, the listing broker. And the next one we have is we're going to waive the, we have the 35W that is not included here. So we're going to have to add it. So we go up here to add. And a little search here, 35W, we happen to just know that that's the um, that is the form that we're looking for. If we didn't, we could put in inspection or just go through all of the forms and look, and then we add that there and it's going to go to the bottom. 
well, close to the bottom. Add that in, and we're going to waive the inspection and move forward, save and exit. Are you getting the idea here? We'll go over a few more. We just have a couple more forms, and then we will move on to the next section. We have escalation. That one's important. <clears throat> All right. So we, we're going to pay $10,000 over, let's do 11,000 just for fun. I like to take it to 11 and they're willing to go up to 2 million. They love this. Joe loves this place. And all of these things are fine. 60 days is fine. Competing offer. There's no criteria that we need to um, throw in there. This is filled out by the listing broker. And we will save and exit that. Okay, did we cover everything? I think so for that. Let's go ahead. This is a crazy market, so we'll include the buyer's advisory in a seller's market. And we'll have that. I'm just going to leave all of these forms in here. We're going to show you how you can remove them later. So they all don't go over to the listing broker. Okay, that's the portion of forms. And the next part, we will go through the document portion. And